My Gavanen folks. Today we have a very interesting generalized integral called Rob's integral or Rabe's integral. Not sure how to pronounce his name to be honest. Comment down below in case I'm butchering his name and please provide the correct pronunciation. What matters is that the guy after whom this integral is named is dead. And it's defined as the integral from alpha to alpha plus one, alpha being a non-negative real number, of log gamma z dz. Okay, cool. So this is clearly an integral function, i of a parameter alpha. And because we have this structure in place already, let's invoke Feynman's trick of differentiating under the integral sign, which is not exactly going to be differentiating under the integral sign in this case. It's actually much more straightforward. So we'll differentiate with respect to alpha. So we have the derivative with respect to alpha. Terribly sorry about that. Of the integral from alpha to alpha plus 1 of log gamma z dz. And of course, by the fundamental theorem of calculus, that means on the right hand side, we're left with log gamma alpha plus one minus log gamma alpha. And using the properties of the logarithm, we have log gamma alpha plus one over gamma of alpha. And of course, we have this really nice recursion formula for the gamma function. We know that gamma z plus 1 terribly. Sorry about that. Gamma z plus 1 equals z times gamma z. So this implies that i prime of alpha is just log alpha times gamma alpha over gamma alpha, where there's some lovely cancellation. So we're left with log alpha. So that's the derivative of i with respect to alpha, which was fairly quick. And now we look to return back to the integral function by integrating with respect to alpha. So we have i of alpha on the left equal to integrating by parts just yields alpha times log alpha minus alpha plus a constant of integration c. Okay, cool. So how exactly should one calculate the value of c? Well, from the looks of the right hand side, the limit as alpha approaches one from the right would be quite would be quite nice to work with. So the limit of i of alpha as alpha approaches zero from the right would be the limit as alpha approaches zero from the right of alpha times log alpha minus zero plus c. And you can verify quite easily using L'Hopital's rule that this thing converges to zero as well. So we're left with c equal to the limit on the left-hand side, which by the looks of it should equal the integral from 0 to 1 of log gamma z dz. Okay, cool. So that means we have this really nice integral side quest for calculating the value of the constant of integration. c here equals integral 0 to 1 log gamma z dz. And we could invoke a transformation here going from the z realm to the 1 minus z realm, which would take dz to negative dz and would actually switch up the limits of integration. The 0 turns into a 1 minus 0, which is 1, and the 1 turns into a 0. So c here also equals the integral from 1 to 0 of log gamma 1 minus z, terribly sorry about that, negative dz, and we get rid of the negative sign by switching up the limits of integration, which for now look extremely weird, and now they're perfectly cool. So we have integral 0 to 1 log gamma 1 minus z dz. So now we have two different forms of the exact same integral. So you guys know exactly what to do next. We add them up to get 2 times c equal to integral 0 to 1 log gamma z dz plus integral 0 to 1 log gamma 1 minus z dz. So we have two integrals from 0 to 1 and using the linearity of the integration operator, we write this as integral 0 to 1 log gamma z plus log gamma 1 minus z, and you saw this coming, we'll use the properties of the logarithm to write this as log gamma z times gamma 1 minus z dz, which is absolutely beautiful because now we can invoke Euler's beautiful reflection formula. 
That is, we know that gamma z times gamma 1 minus z equals pi over the sine of pi times z. So this implies that c here equals 1 half the integral from 0 to 1 of log pi over sine of pi z dz, which equals 1 half integral 0 to 1 log pi minus log sine of pi z dz. Again, using linearity, we have 1 half of integral 0 to 1 of log pi dz, which of course sorts out to log pi times an interval of length 1. So all that's left here is just a log pi minus the integral from 0 to 1 of log, terribly, sorry about that, sine of pi z dz. Okay, cool. Now we could invoke another transformation here, and that is for this integral. So we let pi z equal theta, which implies that z here equals 1 over pi times theta. So dz is just 1 over pi times d theta. And the limits transform from 0 to 1 to now 0 to pi. So the integral is now integral 0 to pi of log sine theta d theta times 1 over pi, which is pretty cool because we can relate this to a very well-known integral, Euler's log trig integral. But Euler's log trig integral is an integral from 0 to pi over 2 of log sine theta d theta, this thing equal to negative pi over 2 log 2, which is cool, but we have an integral from 0 to pi, which is no problem whatsoever, because we know that the sine function is symmetric about pi over 2, that vertical line x equals or theta equals pi over 2 in this case, and the logarithm of course being an injective function. So areas either side of that vertical line are equal. So that means we can write this as twice the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of log sine theta d theta. Okay, cool. That's quite nice indeed. So we have exactly what we need. That's 2 over pi times negative pi over 2 log 2. Some wonderful cancellation happening. And all of this implies that... Oh, terribly sorry about that. Hear me. All of this means that we just have 1 half log pi. The two negatives canceling out. 1 half log pi plus log 2, which is, of course, log root 2 pi. Absolutely beautiful indeed. Now we return to the actual integral function. Recall that i of alpha equaled alpha times log alpha minus alpha plus the constant, the constant now uncovered as log 2, uh, root 2 pi, that is. And perhaps we can clean this up a little bit more. We have integral from alpha to alpha plus 1 of log gamma alpha, no, log gamma z or x, whatever, dz, equal to, this thing over here can be expanded or can be written more in a more compact sense as log of alpha to the alpha. So we might as well write this as log alpha to the alpha root 2 pi minus alpha. And that, my friend, is the integral we, we were out to prove. An interesting side result could be the integral from 0 to some integer n of log gamma z. So let's just see if we can derive something. So we have integral from 0 to n of log gamma z dz. This would equal a sum of integrals. This is the integral from 0 to 1, plus the integral from 1 to 2, terribly sorry about that, plus the integral from 2 to 3, so on and so forth, and we have the integral from n minus 1 to n of log gamma z dz. And we know exactly what each one of these integrals converges to. Why am I not just 
moving this around to give myself some writing space. Okay, so what is all of this? This would just be the sum of the sum over k from 0 to... Wait, the integral from 0 to 1 is just log root 2 pi, so we could just single that out, and we have a sum over k from 1 to... Now, the integral is from alpha to alpha plus 1, and we have an alpha on the right-hand side. So this is the sum over k from 1 to n minus 1 of the integrals from, well, what exactly? From k to k plus 1. Does that make sense? Yes, indeed it does. And we know exactly what the integral sorts out to. It's exactly this term on the right-hand side with the alpha being replaced by k. So we have log root 2 pi plus log k to the k minus k, which looks pretty dope. And we have log root 2 pi plus the sum over k from 1 to n minus 1 of log root 2 pi, which is just a constant, which means we're summing ones, how many ones, n minus 1 number of ones, which last time I checked should be equal to n minus 1. So yeah, that was the hard part of the video. And adding these two together will just yield n times log root 2 pi. Okay, cool. And then we have minus sum over k from 1 to n minus 1 of k. So that's the sum of the first n minus 1 positive integers, which last time I checked should be equal to the number of integers times the number of integers minus 1. No, wait, it was the number of integers plus 1. So that's minus 1 plus 1 cancellation. Oh yeah, this is n times n minus 1 over 2, which looks quite nice. And then we have this really cool term that I'm just going to write in the expanded form. And that is the logarithm. And because we're summing these logs, we can just write them as a single as the log of a single product. So we have log of 1 times 2 squared times 3 cubed all the way up to, let's see, n minus 1 to the n minus 1, which is pretty damn cool indeed. So that's the integral from 0 to n of log gamma z. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below in case you found any other cool results using this integral. Thank you. See you next time.